Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at worked solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam which will be sat by students studying BTEC Level 3 Nationals in Engineering. Now the document that we're going to be referring to today are the sample assessment materials that are or have previously been provided on the Edexcel website and the document that we're going to be referring to in particular is Issue 1 of the sample assessment materials. Question 5 states the following, an engineer has been given an engineering drawing of a structural plate but none of the angles have been stated. Calculate the size of angle A and we have a diagram there that's not to scale. Now once again this is a relatively straightforward question providing we can recall that we need to apply either our sine or our cosine rule to this question. And if we switch documents, here we have the equations and information sheet from the Engineers Academy. And we have two rules there, the sine and cosine rule. Now one thing that you'll note about the sine rule is that if we were to isolate two of those terms, let's say A over sine A equals B over sine B, the only way that we can find an unknown angle, let's say it was angle A, is by knowing one of the other angles. So it's angle B for example. Now in the case of the question that we have here, we're not given any angles, which means we're going to have to resort to using the cosine rule at the bottom there where there's only one angle as an unknown and all of the other terms are lengths of sides. So let's transfer that equation across. We've got a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos A. And the thing we're trying to find is angle A. Now if angle A is the angle that we're trying to find then lowercase a is the side that's opposite the angle. So we have A here and it doesn't actually matter which way round we assign B and C. Next let's put some numbers in here because it makes it easier to work with the equation. So A is 60. We're going to work in millimetres. So we've got 60 squared equals B, 30 squared, plus C, which is 42 squared, minus 2BC cos A. So 2 times B is 30, times C is 42 cos A. So what we can see here is the thing we're trying to find at the moment cos A is tied up in an expression. As we go through and simplify this, we can isolate cos A and then we can calculate A from that. So let's simplify what we have here. 60 squared is 3,600. 30 squared is 900. And 42 squared is 1764. And I'm also going to multiply out 2 times 30 times 42, which is 2,520. So now I can continue simplifying this. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 900 from each side, and I'm going to minus 1,764 from each side. Or in effect, minusing 2,000. 664 from each side. So 3600 minus 900 minus 1764 is 936. So 936 equals minus 2520 cos A. Next I'm going to divide each side by minus 2520 to get cos A on its own. So we're getting closer to our solution now because cos A is 936 divided by minus 2520. Make sure you don't lose that minus sign there. And that equals minus 0.3714 to four decimal places. Now there's a couple of things to be careful of here. First of all, we need to make sure that our calculators are in degrees and not in radians. 
And the other thing that I would advise you to do is to keep your full calculator display at this stage. So although I've written minus 0.3714, my calculator display is minus 0.37142871. And I'm going to leave that in my display. Now the inverse of cos is cos to the minus 1. So our final stage then is as follows. A equals cos to the minus 1. And I'm going to write in brackets there of answer. Because your calculator will have a function ans which will recall the minus 0.3714. Therefore A equals 111.8 degrees. And that answer is accurate to one decimal place.